one of the pioneers actually in Lebanon. We're working with local craftsmen. She started her research like at least 10 years ago, like one of the very first ones. And uh, she has her own network of very specialized craftsmen all over the country. And uh, woodworking, for example, is also one of the most like uh, what we know and uh, most talented also woodworker from it is also available in different finishing in terms of wood if one wants it's a limited edition of eight pieces. So Nicola, uh, can you tell us a little bit about these uh, these two pieces here? Um, okay, these two rods actually are uh, made by and designed by Tamer Nakishi. Tamer is a Turkish designer based in Istanbul and the concept behind these two rods actually is the idea of the light coming through the different mushabi on the top of the mosque of Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. On the floor, as you can see here, the idea of the pattern, it's the idea of the shadow coming and creating all this myriad of uh, geometric functional objects that you can also use in your interior and definitely also pop on it for sure. Here we have the other version who is also the same concept, but made with stripes of kelim out of dyed black wool, but also black silk. Every single point has been hand-stitched with a silk uh, wire, actually, by the ladies in Turkey. And the idea here is about the transparency and the different layers that you get this idea of a different like, geometrical shape created by the light and the shadow. It's like two different ways to see like this idea of the light reflection. Right. Here we have a piece from Studio Michel Taxler. Uh, Michel Taxler are two young Austrian designers who have been awarded designers of the future in Design Miami two years ago. And they are very much interested into the process in all the work they're doing. For this piece, it was their first approach also to the region and to the Middle East. Um, and we gave them the commission to work uh, on the Musharabi. Uh, they were quite challenged by the work and they started to study the idea of what is a uh, Musharabi and how it is uh, constructed and all the process behind. And the uh, idea in this console is to translate the process of making a Mosharabi into a kind of gradient translation where you can see also all the different steps behind the construction and the realization of a Mosharabi. So if you look from the left side going towards the left, the right side here, you can see that every single piece of wood is slowly more and more and more refined and detailed actually until you arrive to the very last layer where you have like the traditional um, musharabiyah and all the layers before are simplified geometry going to the very simple uh, wood cube or rectangle actually which is uh, the base of before being cut in the raw material. And the language also has been developed in a three-dimensional way, so it's also a very innovative way to use the Musharabi that becomes work. And we also made a special publication with Brown Book magazine about the process of the Musharabi and the story of the area of uh, the Harabi chandelier from Ali Shafa. And it is a designer from Dubai, from the Emirates. So he wanted to bring this idea of craft, but in a structural way. So basically, there's an inner brass structure that he has been like commissioning, customized again with these brass structures inside to make them structural. And so he basically, yeah, the idea is to create a volume that also takes back the idea of the classic chandelier uh, from the 18th century, but brought with this 
also again to have sense of yomio also of uh, using the traditional manual. Okay. Then we have the work of Office, a uh, studio based in Milan in Italy. Uh, for uh, the occasion of the exhibition, um, there was this commission about doing research on in Lakewood and the different Middle Eastern boxes, how we can bring further the process of uh, doing it in laying box because all of these are made of four different stackable boxes that you can use the way you want since they are like functional objects you can store different things inside and basically the idea is to have this vertical storage so it occupies less space and it becomes also a sculptural object that uh, you can have as an ornament in the middle of your living room or in the room where you think it belongs. And the uh, idea also is to, is to bring the architecture from the Mesopotamian area, uh, which are the ziggurats, which are the early architecture from and to simplify the different volumes and to create this rich language in different colors actually. And the idea of the patterns that you can also change yourself is very interesting in this piece. Uh, so you can create your own rhythm, having everything vertical, horizontal, so it's like different things. And uh, we have also the, the other one, which is more pale color with uh, all the wood interiors still in there of um, Lindsay Adler. Lindsay is a New York based American designer and for this work she when she sent her team to Beirut um, they were all amazed by the blood shaya uh, tile in the system actually which is made out of colored concrete and she decided to explore the idea of working with like flooring system and tiles made according to the old uh, techniques uh, from this beauty company. And uh, the idea was to develop a new language in terms of pattern that was going around the idea of the refraction of the light um, to bring it into a new and more simplified step the, geometrical Islamic patterns and to take them inside these very dynamic and irregular shapes actually as you can see here. It creates a very nice continuity also with some horizontal lines actually. And you can also organize your own composition. There are nine different versions of these styles. And uh, Vlad Shaya is one of the most historical uh, company in the Middle East doing this system of concrete tiling. It's a mix of concrete and marble powder, which are colored and hand poured in special molds, who are all made of metal actually. It is made in mass, so basically the, it will never age in a bad way because it is in in depth basically the way it is done so even if you scratch it or if it's being used it will always remain the same color. We have uh, Nada Dudus um, who created this uh, fragmented clock. The fragmented clock is the idea of a uh, grandfather clock where you can see the time passing by. You have the idea of the rhythm drifting from a more dense and compact time spinning, which becomes more slowly as time. A clock is also a hidden cabinet where you have like hidden handles in the downside of every block, which you can open on the different side to hide or to store different objects. You know. And Nanda is also one of the pioneers in the region. And uh, she's uh, Lebanese and she grew up in Japan and that's why she's also has this like very uh, specific aesthetics also in her work. She studied also the Rhode Island School of Design in the States. Also, so she's bringing a lot of cultural backgrounds from diverse cultures and she's taking it inside the Middle Eastern crowds also in a very interesting way.
she has also uh, different stars and variables to work analysis of various works. Here we have the work of Philippe Marois. Philippe is a designer from Canada, based in London. Uh, for this work, he has been inspired by the wood workers in Beirut when they are doing all the ornamentation, all glued and stick together, like you can see here. And basically the idea behind was to enlarge the scale and to keep it in the original format as an extrusion, not to slice it in very small slices than to stitch it on the different uh, uh, object and ornament, but to keep the ornament functional and being a, an extrusion that goes from the bottom until the top. And the uh, result of three different essences of wood were composing this. Actually. So it's a very subtle shifting between all different wood essences and the idea of uh, rebuilding basically a tree, a trunk of a tree, and to make it uh, very bold and strong. Here we have the Mark Barut uh, objects uh, from the Tessera series. Um, uh, Mark is a designer and architect based in Beirut, Lebanon, and all these pieces have been also produced in Beirut um, by Johnny Fala, which is one of the most um, uh, renowned uh, laboratory for leather goods. Um, and basically the concept in this is to create a seating and a table. And there's also a lounge chair which we don't have here, but which is also available. And the concept is to use the principle of the cube called tessera in Latin, which has 4x4x4 four by four by four centimeters uh, measures and it explores the idea and dynamic of creating uh, a structure that can soften in a different way according to the way you use it on one structural side or on a more ornamental side actually. And here for example the structure has been reversed um, as you can see and it becomes like a structural part where you can sit and it's very firm. Here we have the wall of light which has been designed by Paul O'Barn. Paul is a designer from New York and an American designer, very much interested also in woodworking and in the different shapes of the structure of the objects. And for the gallery, when he came to Beirut um, for the first time, he was uh, very much interested by the metal workers that you can find in Mount Hale and in Bochamont in Beirut. Um, and he was especially fascinated by the the metal spinning and the last uh, work done by them in their various um, workshops. And he decided to pick a selection of different um, shapes, more traditional molds actually that you can find in the workshops in Beirut that have been developed. And he created the idea of a space divider, a wall that you can use to, as a lighting element, but that becomes also something that modifies your perception of the space, also dividing it, but also opening it in a way with this very bright thing. And the composition is very poetic and it brings also a different idea of how you can use lighting in architectural solutions also. And uh, the piece is also available in different treatments, um, which are uh, bronze, copper, uh, steel, this is like a polished, um, it's a polished brass version actually. We about the, yeah. the collaborative process with each designer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the idea in this exhibition called Contemporary Perspectives in Middle Eastern Craft was to bring the designers to the Middle East and to have them work close by with the different craftsmen. And the idea and the concept of this show is to have this collaboration between two worlds uh, because sometimes we feel there's a lack of communication and innovation 
between these two groups. So like saying, okay, we have the ideas and you do it. And in this way, we really wanted to create this synergy between these. We tried to, to go inside uh, the way they work and try to do an analysis of this and also come back to them with, uh, with a new way of seeing maybe their work and seeing how we can bring innovation inside this and make maybe some new objects work contemporary but still using their know-how.